join me today while I use some pigments. Let me pop you up above here so you can see. Okay, we are gonna use first Luxa Shine down on the nail. Now, if you want a color behind this, you need to put your gel color down, cure it, and then the Luxa Shine. There's a reason we're using this top coat first. Number one, I'm doing negative space, but aside from that is when you use the pigments, you only want them to stick where you want them to stick. And if you have a sticky top coat background or color underneath, it's gonna stick everywhere. And this is a no wipe. So that is why I'm putting this down right now before I even do my art or my neon smoke effect at all. Um, I kind of float it a little bit if there's anything that needs to be floated. Um, with these, these are actually acrylic, so there's nothing that needs to be floated because the finish surface is super smooth but you can and then you can always let it kind of settle as well it will self level oh got a little fuzzy there we go um and then we'll do it okay manicure white 101 the reason i'm using this is twofold one i want it to be very vibrant behind it um two i need it to be sticky when it's cured okay and manicure is sticky once cured so use a gel that's sticky once cured you saw how I blobbed it on at an angle, and now I'm just kind of mushing it around. You can use a little alcohol if you want to melt it. I used less alcohol on this round because I wanted it more solid and vibrant. So think of it this way. If you want it a little more watercolory and you have a little more see-through spots, then you're going to use a little more alcohol when you're melting out your color. And then once it's kind of settled to where you want it, is when you will cure it. And honestly, I don't fuss too much about like curing and flash curing because I want it to kind of move. I want to see where it goes. I want movement across the nail. We forget that as artists sometimes when we're doing nails that you need to see it move across the nail, which is why I did it from corner to corner and then switched the angle I went from so that I can have movement across all five of these nails with this whole smoky effect. Kind of fun and you can always add a little bit like i want a little more white i just here's the deal neon's going to be very bright but if you're using a pigment that's not as neon then you can always use the trick to do a little more white behind it because it will pop your color those look pretty good i'm gonna have them cure it and then i'm gonna speed it up over here a little bit so you guys can go ahead and watch how i do this but see how i went from one corner to the next and then i switched my angle I'm gonna I'm gonna switch it again so that the smoke's kind of flowing all across. Another cool thing we could have done is we could have gone a little horizontal on one and then switched it a little more vertical. You just play, you just do however you wanna do. Um, you can also do this where it's not as smoky, obviously, but that's a whole other video. We want it to be smoky and abstract and kind of fun that way. And this brush I'm using, I know I'm gonna get questions, it's linked in my links highlight. Um, it's just a cheap one from Amazon that I love. Here we go. Couple points. Only tap your pigment where you want it. I know the no wipe is there, but don't make your life harder by pushing it into the no wipe. I'm using a makeup applicator and I'm literally barely touching my pigment and then transferring it. And now I'm gonna kinda go blend. And then we've gotta take away the excess. Let me show you this with a brush. See, because of the no wipe, it's only sticking where that polish went, or it's gel polish, I guess is, I should say, that has a sticky inhibition layer once cured. Couple things to think about. Color theory. Don't use a color that creates mud. Like don't use two colors that when they're mixed, it creates mud. So here, like I went from my yellow to my green, and now I'm deciding what I'd put purple with that green, it'll probably be muddy. So I'm gonna put blue next to that green because in between there's a cool teal color that creates. You just have to think this way, like yellow to purple would create mud, but yellow to pink and pink to purple would be totally fine. Um, we'll play with that. We're gonna use a little bit of purple here next. I'm just showing her, making sure she likes it. Here we go. I'm gonna start with blue because I had blue down on the bottom corner. So that's kind of something I'm doing. The color I finish with, I'll often use on the next one, but not always. She was hesitant about this purple until we put it down. And then we fell in love. Look how vibrant that is. Now, instead of yellow or orange, I'm gonna grab more of the pink color and this will blend really beautifully. And you can always add and adjust, dust off, add as well. 
Um, I will link these pigments I'm using. I am only using six of them. I think they actually come in like a set of 10 or 12. I just pulled the six we wanted to use. So they will be linked in my Instagram bio. If you're joining on YouTube, they will be linked below. Um, also on Instagram, I'll probably do a swipe up in a story if that's helpful as well. But look how freaking cool that looks. Okay, I had to slow it down just to get the effect. It was so fun. I am wiping off my little makeup applicator on just a towel next to me in between colors. You could have one for each color if you're that fancy. I'm not that fancy. So in this makeup applicator, we'll probably be pretty shot after this just because the pigment is solid and because I'm wiping it off so aggressively check it out you guys okay we have to do the thumb so I'm thinking let's use some more green let's use some more green because we did only have that on like the middle finger and see this is where you have to just trust yourself like what feels balanced what's fun and listen to your client they will get involved once you start doing this they're gonna be like oh my gosh oh my gosh put the orange down okay put down the blue they're, they're gonna get, dig it so Oh, right there, by the way, I didn't grab enough pigment. It's just the tiniest amount, but maybe not that tiny of an amount. <laughs> and then I'm going to blend it a little and wipe off the excess dust. You really want to do that for your top coating and to clean it up. Luxa Shine again, okay? Now, when you top coat this, I'm like floating. I'm not pushing hard because I don't want to pull the pigment off of where I've put it. I'm floating really gently and I'm capping the edges. Treat this pigment like you would treat a chrome because it is a similar product in that it's a really fine powder. And if you don't cap it well, in fact, I'm gonna double top coat this just so everybody's aware. You could also cap it in a hard gel. You could cap a base over it, cure it, and then a top coat over it, cure it. You need to take extra measures anytime you're using a fine powder because it doesn't allow the product on top to go through the powder and bind to the product underneath how gel polish normally works so keep it in mind treat it like a chrome be extra extra careful i'm also going to cure these four before i do the thumb because i did float it and i don't want to tilt it and have it pull and flood cuticles here's a tip this powder gets everywhere take a little alcohol and wipe it up and you'll be just fine it does feel like it gets a little crazy though, so don't worry, it will come right up if you're on a hard surface. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and float this thumbs top coat so that we can get kind of the full effect and take a look at these nails. I love this neon smoke. I really love it on the negative space, but it would look rad. I've done it over black before, I've done it over white. I'm just really feeling kind of the neutral with the neon lately. It's just my jam. I lift my lamp, by the way, for her to hold so that the thumb stays flat. Here is that finished look. It is so freaking cool. And then we think we're gonna use a little more purple, maybe a little more green on the hand, on the other hand, so that we can kind of balance it out. So what I'm gonna do is go ahead and let you guys watch this part kind of unedited as I work through things. And then I'll jump here in back here at the end and give you a tip that is helpful for getting these to stay and for getting a really good clean finished look. So enjoy for the next few minutes if you're sticking around. I sure hope you do.
All right, you guys saw the double top coating there and the really capping of the edges. Here's another thing. This powder does get on the skin. So even though this is a no wipe, I do take a little alcohol on a wipe and I scrub the skin up around it just so it's a really clean look, especially if you're taking photos for any of your content and work. And that way you get a better finished look. You can see a little bit of residue on there. Hey, have a great day. Tag me if you try this. I love sharing your work and I will have links for products all below or in my Instagram bio for you below with YouTube. Have a fantastic day.